Welcome to the John and Heidi Show podcast, brought to you by DirecTV, 1-800-259-7646. Also brought to you by RVWheelitor.com. If you're buying an RV or selling an RV, check out RVWheelitor.com and the Dollar Shave Club. Here's John and Heidi. Thank you so much for listening to the John and Heidi Show on a Friday. Hey, baby, how you doing? Hey, I'm good. How are you? Good. Time flies when you're having fun. This week is just cruising by. I mean, cruising, cruising. It by. absolutely is. Um, That's okay. I'm, I'm ready for, I'm ready for the weekend again. Yeah, yeah it is gonna be kind of nice to get back to a weekend. We kind of get spoiled with all those nice long weeks here. Uh, coming up on the program later today, gonna be visiting with the incredible Dr. Paul. If you ever watch uh, N- National Geographic Wild, Nat Geo Wild, he's got the highest rated show on that channel. Hmm. And a lot of folks that are big fans of his. So uh, he's going to be on the program with us talking about the new season that starts tomorrow. So I'm excited. Speaking of new seasons, I thought this was funny. There's an eight-episode docu-series on a different channel. This one's on Lifetime. Following the intensely competitive world of high school a cappella. Here's why I think it's funny. The name is called Pitch Slapped. That's the name oh of the show. Oh, my gosh. Pitch Slapped. P-I-T-C-H. Wow! I thought that was kind of funny. So, I, I kind of like that. Like, uh, if I were creating a name for something like that, that is something I would have come up with. I thought that was very Heidi-esque. Yeah. I wanted to share. Coming up, we're going to find out what's going on today. It's a special day. We'll tell you why in a bit. This portion of the program is brought to you by Dollar Shave Club. Get razors for $1 a month plus a few bucks shipping so you can enjoy fresh razors every month for as little as $3. Learn more at dollarshaveclub.com slash radio. Today is a special day, Heidi. Do you know what today is? What is today, John? I thought you'd never ask. It's Friday, January the 8th. It is Argyle Day. You ever have like Argyle socks? No. Argyle anything? Not that I can think of, no. no. it's Argyle Day. Day to celebrate your Argyle wares, I guess. It's also <laughs> Bubble Bath Day. We should take a bubble oh, bath. Oh, I love bubble baths. You know baths. how long it's been since we've taken a bubble bath together? It's, oh, it's been a very long time. By the way, for those of you listening, we're married, so that's... <laughs> Otherwise, that would be really weird. Like, what in the world? Uh, It's Earth Rotation Day today, National English Toffee Day today, Midwives Day, Women's Day, National Bubble Bath Day. We already talked about that. National Joy Germ Day. Joy Germ. I don't know what that is. Show and Tell at Work Day and War on Poverty Day. So There you go. Got all of that stuff going for you. (laughs) And I was trying to get a guest today for uh, the Toffee Day. Uh, we're going to actually have them next week. Uh, Jack's Rockin' Toffee. We're going to tell you more about that next week. But I was trying to get him for today. It just didn't work out. But either way, have a special day today by celebrating eating some toffee and talking about whatever you're going to show and tell at work. Coming up, we've got a fun story on the way. This portion of the program is brought to you by RVWheelitor.com. If you want to buy or sell an RV, go to RVWheelitor.com. List your RV for free. Learn more at RVWheelitor.com. You know it's true because you heard it on the radio. What do you do when your car catches fire and your money gets burned up and soggy from the fire extinguisher? Well, an armored car company had a pretty big problem when one of their cars went up in flames in San Uh Francisco. Armed Courier Services was left with thousands of dollars worth of burned and soggy bills after their armored vehicle hit an abandoned car and caught fire. Wow. (laughs) When paper towels and propane heaters couldn't dry out the cash, they turned to an industrial-sized dryer at a local coin-op laundromat. No way. Santa Clara police stood guard as workers piled bills into the dryer. Company president Dan Connolly says... It would have taken way too long to get the bills dry any other way. So they were literally a laundering, laundering money. money, trying to get those things clean. They were throwing them in the dryer. I worked at a laundromat. This is a long time ago. This is when I was in, I was like 15 or 14. And uh, I got to clean out all the lint. Because you don't ever think of that, but you go to a laundromat, where does all that lint go, right? Right. Well, they have like a little bin. And I got to go around and clean out all the lint. You would not believe the cool stuff I found when I was a kid. And they had a rule. The, the The rule was, if it jingles, you keep it. If it folds, you turn it in in case somebody Comes reports back it missing. For it. Right. And I, I found a lot of bills, and the biggest bill I ever found was 100 bucks. Wow. And I turned it in because that's the, the, the rule was, if it jingles, you keep it. If it folds, you turn it in. 
And uh, it was like two weeks later, uh, my boss, when I was giving him a paycheck, he handed it back to me. He said, hey, nobody claimed it, so you get to keep it. I was like, wow. wow. So now somebody from 20 years ago is going to call and say, hey, that was my 100 bucks. <laughs> 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 at that laundromat. Anyway, uh, this, this group here, the Armored Car, I'm sorry, Armored Courier Services had a bunch of soggy bills. They threw them in a dryer, and apparently that works. And you know it's true because you heard it on the radio. The John and Heidi Show is brought to you in part by the Keystone Treatment Center. This is your brain. And this is your brain on drugs. We share silly stories here on the program, but addiction is no joke. If you or someone you know suffers with an addiction to drugs or alcohol, make today the day you seek help. Call toll-free 844-204-1055. That's a toll-free number. Again, 844-204-1055. And this is your brain on drugs. Can a bank robber use his gun as a tax deduction? (laughs) Yes. A bank robber who was jailed in Holland (laughs) had his fine reduced by 2,600 U.S. dollars after a judge agreed to deduct the cost of his expensive pistol as a business expense. Are you kidding me? Prosecutor's service spokesperson backed the judge saying that if you compare crime to normal business activities so the government can seize the profits, then the investment costs must be deducted and tallied from the profits. He did scoff that when he asked, uh, they asked then if a drug dealer could deduct the cost of a Ferrari, saying he hardly thinks the dealer could prove he needed a Ferrari to transport drugs. So they're saying that this guy he needed his quotes, gun. needed the gun to do his thing. But he Why? didn't need a gun that expensive. $2,600? Yeah. $2, why is this in my brain on drugs? I suppose because they mentioned the drug dealer. That doesn't make any sense to me. The, the Usually it's about somebody that did something done while, uh, dumb while they're on drugs. So well, Either way, feel, that's ridiculous. It feels as though we were a little ripped off here. Coming up, we're going to try to redeem ourselves with a good moment of duh. That is on the way. This portion of the program is brought to you by Keystone Treatment Center. Addiction is no laughing matter. Call Keystone Treatment Center toll free at one 844 204 1055. Now, your moment of duh. And it comes from a, an observation here. A friend works in a library at a school and sometimes has to oversee the computers that students use. And an afternoon, this is right before Christmas break, she noticed a young man sitting in front of one of the workstations with his arms crossed, uh, like he's waiting for something, just staring at the screen. After about 15 minutes of this, she decided, I'm going to go over and see what's going on. And she got over there. Now he was being a little impatient. When she said, is there something I can help you with? He said, well, it's about time. I pressed the F1 button for help over 20 minutes ago. So he, because it said on the screen for help, press F1. Oh. So he thought when he pressed F1 that that was going to get the teacher to oh, come over. Oh, funny. <laughs> wow. In the kid's mind, that made perfect sense. But that's not how it works. You're supposed to raise your hand for people to help you. F1 was for uh, advice oh, on the funny. screen, apparently. So I just thought that was really funny. It was shared on Facebook about two weeks ago, and I thought that was kind of fun. And that's your moment of duh for the next generation. We have your Scoop of the Day on the way. The Scoop of the Day is brought to you by Wells Blue Bunny. If you want delicious ice cream, be sure to look for the Blue Bunny. Sure to have your favorite flavors. Learn more at BlueBunny.com. Time now for the scoop of the day. The sad news for 2016, Heidi. Are you sitting down? I am sitting down. Are you ready down. for this? The Meredith Vieira show has been canceled. Oh, no. The, that was only... How will we go on? Secondary news to the fact that she actually had a show. I didn't even know she I had a show. I didn't know she had a show either. But she doesn't anymore. It was canceled. In other news, uh, sweatshirts that also uh, that's also a pillow blowing up on Kickstarter. People who apparently want to take a nap anytime, anywhere... Are, yeah, there's a crowdsource <laughs> campaign for a sweatshirt with an inflatable hood. And guess how much they raised? This is from two days ago when I got the story. How much? $70,000. Are you kidding me? Yeah. Who they, needs this? They had a goal of raising $30,000. And the Hypnos hoodie had raised 70000 That is just wow. donkulous to me. Yeah. All right. Moving right along. Um, oh. World record for credit cards. Guess how many credit cards this man has. I have no clue. 1,497 credit cards. 
all in his name or just like the free ones that they send him in the mail trying to get him to sign up? Well, he holds the record for the most credit cards, 1497. His total line of credit, $1.7 million. Kavanaugh, oh, wow. Walter Kavanaugh, says his credit card obsession started in the 60s when he made a silly bet with a friend. The guy who could collect the most credit cards by the end of the year is going to have to, uh, or is going to get a free dinner from the other one. So it started with... We're going to see who can get more credit cards between me and you in the late 60s. And he decided to take this bet to the nth degree. Wow. 1,497 credit cards. $1.7 million line of credit. I hope he's making at least, you know, payments every month to keep these things down to nothing. He probably isn't using them. He's probably just got them. Hey, wacky. You better hope nobody ever steals his identity. Yeah, no kidding. Oh, (laughs) man, imagine that. We just told you his name. (laughs) Walter Kavanaugh. Hope you're on LifeLock or something. Um, Hey, wacky but true. Somebody stole a truck full of melons. Hamilton, Ontario. Somebody there sitting on $50,000 worth of illegal melons. A fruit truck was stolen on New Year's Eve. $50,000 worth of illegal melons. That's kind of crazy. Um, What on earth would you do with those? uh, I don't know. Probably try to sell them. So if you see a good deal on melons somewhere. (laughs) Wait a minute. These melons stolen? Hey, uh, th- these words are supposed to be banned for 2016. Michigan's Lake Superior State University relieved their for- released their 41st annual list of words that should be banned for the new year. Okay. Their tongue-in-cheek list includes a bunch of funny things every year. And this year started out with the answer to the word uh, so. So you're not supposed to start answering anything with the word so. So the, the word so is gone for the first word of a sentence. So like, so, how are you doing? You just uh, you just broke your own rule. I'm not. The, say- you said so. The word so should be. But you just broke it. Just just in that I'm one. I'm not going to follow these stupid rules. <laughs> Another one is the word presser. We're having a presser at two o'clock. What no, is presser? That's a short term for press conference. We're having a oh, press conference. Stupid. That's so they're saying longer. ban the word. <laughs> well, it's it's yeah, it's dumb because it's stupid. It's it's uh, been used a lot the last year or two. I've never heard that. There's a presser at three. Uh, next one is problematic. If you use the word problematic, you might find that problematic. You're not supposed to use it anymore. Another one is walk it back. That's more than one word. I've never heard that. So, uh, hey, walk it back. And then that's like, you know, let's start from the beginning. Okay, walk it back. Let's start over. And then the last one, this is, again, more of a phrase than a word. These are uh, the 41st annual list of words that should be banned. These words are all together. Break the Internet. How many times in 2015 did we hear... You know, so-and-so uh, published such-and-such, and such and it broke the internet. It didn't break the internet? Are you kidding me? Yeah. So, anyway, that's one that you're not supposed to use anymore. Hmm. There you go. So, are you excited about any of those words? No, you, not at all. Do you even care? No. Are you taking a nap? Uh, pretty much. All right. Let's move on to our strange law. This always wakes you up. In Hereford, England, you may not shoot a Welsh person on a Sunday with a longbow in a cathedral close. So I don't know what that means. I have no idea. You can't shoot a Welsh person on a Sunday with a longbow in the cathedral close. But you could sure shoot a Welsh person on know. a Monday? Apparently you could. And you just couldn't do it in the cathedral close, whatever that is. So huh. I don't know. All I know is that is a very strange law. And this has been your scoop of the day. This portion of the program is brought to you by RoughToughKennels.com. Dog kennels and accessories sent to your front door wherever you live. Your dog deserves it. Learn more at RoughToughKennels.com. Thank you so much for listening to the John and Heidi Show on a Friday. We've got a special guest on the line right now. For those of you who watch Nat Geo Wild, you definitely know the incredible Dr. Paul. And we have him on the line right now, and he's got a new season starting tomorrow. How you doing, Dr. Paul? I'm doing fine, John, and thank you for having me. Well, we're certainly excited to have you on the program. Now, you've been doing this for quite some time. Uh, how long have you been a veterinarian, first of all? Uh, do we really have to say that? <laughs> <laughs> I graduated in 19. 19- 70. Okay. So, so figure that out. 46 so, years. So it's it's a little while. And now the show has been on, is it since 2011? Is that right? Uh, I don't know. Time goes so fast. But the fifth season is airing now. That's coming up tomorrow, Saturday night. And uh, right now they're filming the sixth season already. So what is showing tomorrow night happened last year. So now, do you, I don't know how the process works, but have you seen each episode? I know you lived it, you were a part of it, but when you watch the episode tomorrow night, will that be the first time you see it put together, or do you see it before it goes on TV? No, most of the time I don't even see it. Um, They are getting between 120 and 200 hours of taping a week, because they have three cameras and a whole bunch of GoPros, 
And then the editors in Washington, D.C., they comprise it to about 40 minutes. So, no, I don't really know what the future shows look like or what is on it. So it, when it when it's on tomorrow night, you'll be watching it for the first time, too. I've seen a little bit of it, but not the whole thing, because uh, we saw the what they call the previews, you could call it, and uh, they always tweak it to make it really good. Well, and, and I'm looking at the list here. The one, the series, or the, not the series premiere, but the, the season premiere, rather, tomorrow night is called yeah. Freezen Pole. Yeah, that, that last name, they can do a lot of things with. You they know? do, don't they? <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, again, yes. visiting with uh, Dr. Paul from The Incredible Dr. Paul, and uh, that show is on Nat Geo Wild, and the series uh, has been on for several years, but the season premiere for this year starts tomorrow night at 9, 8 central. And uh, now, what what is this uh, freezing cold? What is that all about? Uh, it was cold last winter here in Michigan, and uh, you can tell it. The Arctic temperatures did everything, but uh, we just kept going. And what you see is, you know, what happens outside the clinic and what happens inside the clinic. Uh, everybody helps out, and everybody does his job. And I do usually the exotic, so that's why you see me with this little tiny hedgehog. Now, are there a lot of hedgehogs in Michigan? Mm, not that many. We have a lot more porcupines, but those are not pets. But uh, little hedgehogs, yes, there are quite a few of them. I saw another one yesterday, and uh, they just... Uh, are nice pets, but there again, they have to be socialized when they're very young. Otherwise, they roll themselves in a ball, and they are very, 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 very prickly on the outside. <laughs> now, that's one of the things that's really uh, unique. There are a lot of veterinarians in the United States, but but your particular practice, you work with a lot of exotic animals. What are some of the more exotic animals that you've seen? We just talked right now about a hedgehog, but you know, what are some of the other things that you see in your clinic? To be honest with you, they can bring out anything they want to. I'll do my best to help them. Not that I know everything about every animal, but uh, yes, we see snakes. We see, oh, you know, little white mice. You know, this little girl, this little wild white mice, and. You still look at them because it is her pet. Yeah. And we, we have people that bring out you know, that pet chickens, uh, snakes, uh, iguanas. You just name it. We try to help every animal that needs help. Are there any animals that come your way that you say, no, I'm not going to do that. I don't touch spiders or I don't touch lizards. Or is there anything that you won't work on? Lizards, lizards are fine. Spiders, they normally don't come because either they quickly die, they disappear, or the owner just buys a new one, it seems like. Okay. Um, but otherwise, yes, anything that, that you know, flies, crawls, or walks is welcome to the clinic. Now, what would you say over the, the years that you've been doing this, like you said, you started in 1970, are there any stories that you look back from before the TV show started that you look back now and say, man, I really, really wish I would have been doing the TV show then because people would have loved to have seen that? Yes, that story is in my book, really, that is called uh, Never Turn Your Back on an Angus Cow. When I was at a farm and the calf was born inside out, that's the easiest to describe it. It's a, it's a fear burst effect and of course the cab will not live outside because the chest is not closed and it can never breathe all the intestines on the outside. This calf was still alive and I felt the heart beating in the cow. No. And yes, you know, in order to, to kill the calf, I just grabbed a hold of the heart and pulled it out. And I think that was one of the fastest way to, to euthanize the calf in the cow so I could cut it up and get it out and save the cow. But I had a beating heart in my hand outside the cow. Oh, wow. Yes. And that was right after that movie, The Temple of Doom, came out. Oh, I, I don't know if you remember that. I do. <laughs> that happened in that movie. So you did that in real life. I did that in real life with a real heart, yes. Now, are there are there things <laughs> that when you're when you're filming the program, are there things that happen where you say, boy, I hope this doesn't make it? You know, do you do you make little goofs where, where you think, oh, boy, I hope this doesn't go on the show? Does that happen, or how does that work? See, the thing is, I, I have fun with the cameras, <laughs> and I goof off in front of the camera, and Diane tells me, Quit goofing off in front of the camera because they use it. <laughs> but you know what? So, yes, I have to watch a little bit what I'm doing. That's one of the reasons that people love you so much, though, Dr. Paul, because you are a fun person. I enjoy visiting with you. We've talked one other time. I always enjoy visiting with you because you're a very, very fun person, and it makes the show fun to watch. If 
think about the stuff that you're doing. That could be kind of boring for somebody. You know, if some people were watching yeah. that and you were just being, you know, very uh, straight laced and you weren't cracking jokes and having fun, it, it wouldn't be the same show, would it? Probably not. But like I said, this is what I have been my whole life. And I think maybe that's why, you know, that you Wild decided to try it. And right now we're the top show. And I'm glad of it because it brings the American farmer back in the American living room in a good light. That's also important for me. Well, I'm super excited for you for another fabulous season. Like you were, we were talking earlier, you said you've got this one completely filmed and you're working on next year already. That's awesome. So we're excited to see uh, the, the new episodes kicking off tomorrow night. So the series premieres, the uh, season premieres. I always say series premieres, but it's a season that premieres tomorrow night. Yes. At 9, 8 central, and the first episode is called The Incredible Dr. Paul, Freezing Pulled. So uh, kind of like Freezing Cold, but it's Freezing Pulled. I like that. That's that's pretty clever. Yes. That's fun stuff. It is. Well, it is. Thank you very much, John. Yeah, thank you so much for chatting with me, and we'll uh, hopefully get a chance to talk to you next year about the things that you're filming right now. I hope so. <laughs> okay. Thank you again. You have a great thank day. You. you too. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. The Incredible Dr. Paul. The new season starts tomorrow night, 9, 8 central, and again, it's on Nat Geo Wild. It's called The Incredible Dr. Paul. Thank you so much for listening to The John and Heidi Show. This portion of the program is brought to you by CarsForSale.com. If you're in the market to buy a car, truck, or van, find thousands of vehicles to choose from at CarsForSale.com. Fun fact for you, Heidi. What's that, John? The Bureau of Engraving and Printing is offering free, low-quality images of the U.S. currency bills over the Internet. This is for artists, students, and others who find their computers won't allow them to copy the bills because of hidden counterfeiting protections. So there you go. What do you okay. think of that? Okay. Fun fact for you, Heidi. What was that? Angela Clark made front page headlines, uh, Rich Barker will marry me. Will you marry me? It says here, Clark's proposal was published in a newspaper uh, in Ohio. The answer delivered to the Tribune readers the next day, a giant headline that said, yes. The proposal <laughs> accompanied a photograph of Clark holding a box with a wedding band. So there you go. Rich Barker, will you marry me? She proposed to him with that giant headline in the newspaper. That's kind of cool. That is not cool at all. It's not, it's not a fun fact for you? No. One other. This actually is a fact. Maybe I should have started with this one. Fun fact for you, Heidi. What's that, John? Did you know that Charlie Brown's father was a barber in the Peanuts character? It's kind of ironic I, considering he doesn't really have much hair. I have no, I have no now idea you know. why that would be interesting. That's a fun fact. Now you know. <laughs> Coming up, we've got a whole bunch of fun stuff. We're going to talk about do-it-yourself ways to get exercise at home. That's on the way. This portion of the program is brought to you by StoneGroupArchitects.com. It's more than a building. It's design and function working together. Check out the project portfolio at StoneGroupArchitects.com. Thank you so much for listening to the John and Heidi Show on a Friday. Hey, baby, how you doing over there? I'm fantastic. You hanging in there? I am. Are you ready for this? I got a, a list of do-it-yourself ways to get some exercise at home. Sure. This is the time of year that gymnasiums are full of people. <laughs> gymnasiums. It sounds funny when you say it that way. But health clubs and gyms are full of people right now. <laughs> so if you're one of these people that don't like people, this is a tough time to go to those places. So I have here... Uh, some ideas uh, for people who don't want to go or can't afford to go or just don't want to go. First one is weighty decisions. Pumping iron or adding resistance with homemade weights is a surefire way of relieving stress and burning a few calories. Here's some things you can use. An old plastic milk jug or laundry detergent bottle with sand or water is a popular way about making your own weights. Hmm. Another one, penny-filled tennis balls. So you cut a little slit in a tennis ball and stick a bunch of pennies in it, and you've got a nice little weight that way. Tube socks stuffed with dry beans and basketballs filled with rice are other possibilities that involve creative reuse. Some, some things you can do instead of getting one of those medicine balls. They say fill a basketball with rice. I'm not sure how you get the rice in the basketball. Hmm. And I can only imagine what happens if that sucker breaks open. Another one. Give me 20. Numerous equipment-free repetitive exercises like jumping jacks, running in place, squats, planks, push-ups, often performed in a gym. That could be easily done at home as well. You don't need to be in a gym to do those. Right. Some of these can be performed in your kitchen as you wait for your dinner to finish. And it says here, just make sure you have adequate space and some decent upbeat music to keep you going. Another one. Got steps in your house? Use them. <laughs> Here's an idea. Every morning when you wake up, run downstairs, fix breakfast before you work, and then run back up the stairs. So 
They're saying making extra trips up and down the stairs is a good thing. It frustrates me when I have to go back up. Like, I'll leave my phone upstairs, and I'll come down. And I'm like, where's my phone? Oh, I left like, hey, it Like, hey, Taylor, throw me my phone. I'm like, you know what? I'm weighing in my mind. Can I get through the whole day without my phone? <laughs> and then the last thing is walk around the block. Even if it's not so great out, you can uh, bundle up a bit and walk around the block. A 20-minute breather will consist of a couple laps around a neighborhood, and it will help keep you in shape. So there are some fun ideas to get some exercise at home. On the way... We've got a law professor specializing in personal injury, and now he's being sued for personal injury that he gave to somebody. It's on the way. This portion of the program is brought to you by DirecTV, 1-800-259-7646. Also brought to you by RVWheelitor.com. If you're buying an RV or selling an RV, check out RVWheelitor.com and the Dollar Shave Club. Here's John and Heidi. This is kind of an interesting story. I, I love when you've got these things that kind of where it's like the whole turnabout is fair play thing. A law professor that specializes in personal injury cases is being sued for personal injuries that he gave to somebody. Okay, what did he do? He elected to demonstrate his lecture on a person, a personal injury by pulling a chair out from under a student as she oh, sat down. Oh, no. He's now being sued by the woman for five million bucks. Whoa. That may be a bit much, but Denise DeFiti accused of the professor Gary Munich of Pace University uh, of battery and negligence, so she's a law student, she knows what she's up to, claiming that the fall caused her to, and I quote, suffer severe pain and mental anguish and severe emotional distress. The unusual class illustration allegedly took place while he and his students were discussing a tort case. Tort is a civil wrong in which one party seeks damages from another for injuries. Anyway, uh, she claimed that the professor's conduct was outrageous, shocking, and intolerable, exceeding all reasonable bounds of decency, according to the suit. Okay. So, if she wins, will she get an A, or will she... <laughs> but, but, here's the thing. Did he say, who wants to volunteer for this demonstration? I'm going to pull the chair out from under you. It doesn't say that. Or he... did he just wait until somebody was getting ready to sit down and yank the chair out from under him? I don't Those know. are two very different things. They are. So... It'll be interesting if to see. If she volunteered, absolutely, you know, she shouldn't get anything. Yeah. But if, if he just yanked her chair off from under her. Right. Then, then absolutely she should sue because that'd be million? embarrassing. It and seems like lots. Depending on how bad she got hurt, if she hurt mm-hmm. her spine. Yeah, I suppose. All right. Coming up, we've got some other fun stuff to talk about. Thanks for listening to a Friday edition of the John and Heidi Show. This portion of the program is brought to you by GunUp.com. If you're a gun lover, you'll be in heaven at GunUp.com. Built by experienced military veterans, shooting sports competitors, and publishing professionals, they have awesome stories and articles that are read by millions of gun enthusiasts. Check it out at GunUp.com. Diversity. Is diversity a good thing or a bad thing? Well, for years, people have been saying diversity is a strength. Harvard researcher Robert Putnam decided to test it, and he was stunned by his findings, and he was afraid to release them. He found that the more diverse a community is, the less likely anyone was to trust anyone else. He said in the most diverse communities, such as Los Angeles, people, quote, hunker down and, quote, act like turtles. He says they not only don't trust people who don't look like them, but they don't trust people who do look like them. They don't trust their mayor. They don't trust their neighbors. They don't trust their local newspaper or their institutions. He said, the only thing there's more of is protests and marches and watching TV. So, uh, and it's, it's interesting because here's the thing. I don't think that it has anything so much to do with the diversity as it does to the fact that those are bigger communities. In a bigger community, whether it's a diverse community or not, I think that people find themselves hunkering down because it's scary to go out when there's a lot of people. You just don't no, trust I disagree. everybody out there. I don't know. Anyway, interesting findings from Harvard Research, and he was afraid to release the findings because it wasn't the, what he was expecting. Yeah, well, so, then he'd be called a racist. Like, you can't do anything anymore without being called a racist. I was aiming for something positive, and guess what I found? All right, coming up, we've got some uh, interesting things about people being tone deaf. That's on the way. This portion of the program is brought to you by Dollar Shave Club. You can get razors sent to your door each month for just $1, plus a couple of bucks shipping. It's an amazing deal. Log on to dollarshaveclub.com slash radio to learn more. That's dollarshaveclub.com slash radio. Now, back to the John and Heidi Show podcast. Thank you so much for listening to the John and Heidi Show. Do you know anybody that's tone deaf, Heidi? Like when they sing, they just are way, way, way out of tune. Uh, re- well, I know people that aren't good singers, but that doesn't necessarily mean they're tone deaf. Well, researchers say people who are tone deaf, people that can't sing a tone, a, a note in tune, 
suffer from a disconnect in their brain. Researchers found that tone-deaf people have fewer connections between two areas of their brain that perceive and produce sounds. Tone deafness is also appearing to be largely hereditary, and it's present in an estimated 4 to 17% of the population. The study's lead author is Psyche Louie of Harvard <laughs> University. I got that right because I, I read the uh, phonetic spelling uh-huh. here. Psyche Louie. That was That's impressive. Yeah. Uh, likened the connection to a highway between two islands in the brain and said, in tone deaf people, there's less traffic on that highway. So <laughs> if there's less traffic, wouldn't that be a better thing? <laughs> I don't know. I think that uh, for me, the most prominent example of tone deafness is if you watch like the early episodes of any reality show where there's people singing. Because there's a lot of great people that try out, but for whatever reason, they always say, hey, we're going we're gonna to put you through. And it's some guy that gets out there and can't sing or some young lady that can't sing to save their life. But they put them through literally just, just so they can ratings. be made fun of. Yeah, I know some people nice. who tried out. I'm not even going to say the name of the show because I'm not going to glorify them with that. But tried out for the popular singing show that everybody knows of. Anyway, uh, a fabulous singer. I mean, amazing singer. But she was turned down, and then that season, we watched it because we were like, well, they must be really good this year. So I was watching just the first few episodes, and there were people that it was yodeling like completely off tune. I'm like, what in the world? Yeah. But that's because they say that is entertainment. All they're really doing is making these people look really bad. I think that's not nice. That's not but nice. Now, at least we can say, according to the research from Harvard, that that tone deafness is something that uh, is a disconnect in their brain. So... I don't know if that helps or hurts. Maybe that doesn't help. (laughs) I don't know. Coming up, we've got some good news to share. It's on the way. This portion of the program is brought to you by DirecTV. Call 1-800-259-7646. They have hundreds of channels to choose from with many packages to fit your viewing desires. Learn more at 1-800-259-7646. Got some good news for you, Heidi. What's that, John? Everybody is trying. Some people have already given up on their resolutions by now because it's been like a whole week. <laughs> but this is the time of year that more and more people are trying to lose weight, right? Yes. So if I gave you an idea of something you could do to lose weight, and it's pretty darn simple, would that be good? Yes. Very good. All you got to do, says here, headline, stay trim by hanging out at the water cooler. Yeah. Standing by the water cooler may help you stay trim. Researchers from the University of Queensland in Australia strapped an accelerometer, a device that measures not just steps but movements, onto 168 healthy and active men and women for a week. They found those who incorporated more breaks, like standing or walking into their work days, were about 2.3 inches slimmer around the waist than those who parked it in their swivel chair for hours on end. It says here, they also had healthier blood fats. What is that? Is that like blood like pressure? Like your cholesterol. No, oh, okay. I just never heard of it. That's a blood fats. Uh, also, lower triglycerides. It says here, breaks were as short as a minute. Very doable, and they defined them as anything but sitting. So, touch your toes at your desk, stand up while you're on the phone, but at the very least, you could stretch. These are all simple little things you can do to stay trim without even working out. They're saying, all you got to do is just stand there. No, they said that they were testing active adults. So people who are already very active, but the ones that that take more breaks from their desk were one to two inches slimmer than the ones that are at work all day and then go do their workouts. So you're saying if I stand up right now, I'm not going to lose two inches? (laughs) No, most likely not. What a a misleading story. But I I am going to stand up. You just did. I was about to stand until you told me that. I'm like, I'm going to stand up for this. No way. (laughs) <laughs> Not at all. All right. Time to say goodbye, Heidi. Goodbye, Heidi. Goodbye, everybody. If you want to read more about that, that was from Good Housekeeping. Uh, I don't have the magazine. That's a magazine, right? I don't get that. Yeah. Mag- I just it was shared online, so that's where I read it. But uh, anyway, stay trim by hanging out at the water cooler. What a deceiving headline. Should, <laughs> should be if you're trim, you're probably hanging out by the water cooler. <laughs> all right. Thanks for listening to the John and Heidi Show on a Friday. Have a great weekend. We'll see you back here on Monday. Time now for the bonus break, only available here on the John and Heidi Show podcast. Your bonus break is brought to you by the Dollar Shave Club. These guys are awesome, just donated a whole bunch of stuff to the troops. That's one of the things that I like about them. But here's another thing I like about them is they just got a fun sense of humor. 
Uh, if you've not ever gotten a product from them, you don't know this, but I'm going to tell you what you get. When you get the product, you also get a thing called the Bathroom Minutes, and it's a fun little publication that they send out. Mm-hmm. Every month, I really look forward to that, probably as much, if not more, than I look forward to the Razors. Because I flip through and read the thing, and there's always fun stuff in there. It's really kind of a neat thing. That alone would be worth the subscription to become a, a Dollar Shave Club member. And you can get a, a membership for as little as $3 a month. And I know what you're thinking. These razors must suck. No, they don't. They're actually really good razors. So really good razors for as little as 3 bucks a month. You can do the, the Quattro, which is 4 for uh, 6 bucks a month, or do the Executive Series like I do for just 9 bucks a month. Get all of the details and make that decision for yourself at dollarshaveclub.com slash radio. You like cotton candy, right? Oh, I love cotton Have candy. Have you ever wondered how in the world did somebody come up with this amazing idea? Not really, but now that you bring it up, I wouldn't mind knowing. Well, let me tell you. Uh, 1897 is the year. William Morrison and John Wharton from Tennessee, they were making candy in Nashville. They invented the world's first electric machine to allow crystallized sugar to be poured into a heated spinning plate and then pushed by centrifugal force. (laughs) Centrifugal force? I don't know how you say that. Uh, Through a series of tiny holes, and they called it back then fairy floss. And in 1904, the Louisiana Purchase Expedition, otherwise known as the St. Louis World's Fair. By the way, I want to say something. That World's Fair, there were so many amazing things that were invented during that. And one of them was this, fairy floss. This is the first time nobody had it before that. Another thing was waffle cones. Okay, anyway, Another can we was hot get dogs back to this? Bun. How did they, what made them decide to try to pour it in there? Why Why did they invent it? Um, How did it happen is what I want to know. So they sold the product in the boxes to each one 25 cents. <laughs> doesn't say that. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I wanted to know. <laughs> so from that same, oh, but it does say from the same fair, they also got the first ice cream cone. Uh-huh. And I was wrong. Hot dogs were at a baseball game. But at that same World's Fair, also iced tea was invented. Mm. Because there were people selling tea, but it was so hot, nobody wanted tea. So they're like, you know what? Let's throw some ice in it and see what happens. So it's just an amazing amount of food things that came from that one fair. Huh. All right. Hey, with lose weight and get fit being one of the number one most popular commonly broken resolutions, I've got a list here from Wallet Hub. They love to send these things out. 2016's best and worst cities for active lifestyles. You ready for this? You think? I am ready. Mm-hmm. So we're going to talk about where, the, if you're looking for excuses, if you live in one of these places, then you might be able to say, well, that's why That's why I'm overweight. <laughs> I live in the wrong place. Well, they're saying the best cities for an active lifestyle, I'll do the top five. Pittsburgh, PA. You know what? I'll do the top ten. What the heck? Wisconsin. Madison, Wisconsin number ten. These are the best places. Then Henderson, Nevada. Then Boise, Idaho. Then Tucson, Arizona. Number six, Minneapolis, Minnesota. Really? Yeah. Then number five for the best cities for active lifestyles, Pittsburgh. Cincinnati comes in at number four. Tampa, number three. Orlando, number two. And Scottsdale, Arizona, number one. The the reason I decided to wind up to ten is because I wanted to make sure that we put those in there. The top five are all in pretty nice climates. But yeah. you got Minneapolis, Minnesota. Minneapolis. That what? one surprised me. I was going to say that. Madison, Wisconsin. What? It's the rest cold. of them all make sense because you can be active year yeah. round. Pittsburgh, where... I guess, is even cold. So uh, now let's talk about the worst cities. These for are an probably all going to be in bad climate. No. Hyala, Florida is number 91. 92 is Ohio, Columbus. Really? 93, New- Newark, New Jersey. Number 94, Fort Worth, Texas. Really? Number 95, Memphis, Tennessee. What's wrong with Memphis? Number 96, North Las Vegas, Nevada. They are always on the worst list of everything. They are. North Las Vegas. I, next time we go to Las Vegas, can we just drive north? I want to check it out. <laughs> I feel bad for them now. I'm like, I'd put together a campaign. Visit North Las Vegas. Please. Nobody else comes here. <laughs> Somebody. Throw us a bone. Uh, 97 on the list was New York, New York. 98, New Jersey City, New Jersey. 99, Irving, Texas. And the worst city for an active lifestyle, for whatever reason, Laredo, Texas. Huh. I don't know why that is. Crazy. And this, again, is from Wallet Hub. if you want to check that out. They got all the criteria on what they did. It's like the number of golf courses, number of sporting goods stores, fitness centers per capita, fitness trainers and aerobic instructors per capita, number of parks and playgrounds. So it's all of that stuff that th- kind of plays into how they choose this. Speaking of Texas, because the worst place was Laredo, let's go to San Antonio, Texas. Okay. Where we find Texas, uh, San Antonio, Texas police chief... William McManus, he announced that he was upgrading the department's training program to teach his officers how to obey the law while they are off duty. 
it seems he had to fire at least 10 officers so far in 2015 for breaking the law. Included in the new program is a personal talk from McManus to each incoming cadet to stress that police officers must not commit crimes anytime, anywhere. Do we really need to have that? That should be common sense, but you, you know what? So. I I know officers. I do too. <laughs> and I've seen them breaking the law when they're off duty and even when they're on duty and it drives me crazy. I know many police officers that are good people, very, very good Well, yeah, good people, but I mean, so. I'm talking, you know, things that all of us do. Speeding. Like, what, Heidi? <laughs> like speeding. Okay. Or like, you know, just things like that. Things that... that all people do, but shouldn't police officers be the role models they and should. never do those things because they're going to be the ones giving you a ticket the next day? You might want to be careful about how, how much detail you put up, <laughs> or you're going to get calls from two of your brothers. <laughs> they both happen to be police officers. Hey, let's change the subject quick. A robber who broke into a Pensacola, Florida home uh, taking small valuables came back a few hours later to finish what he started. This time, took the plasma screen TV. Police were investigating the break-in when he returned. He attempted to take the television, but then left in the backyard and fled with the owner's wallet, watch, and video game system. Police left the television in the backyard to dust for fingerprints when the robber returned and took it without being caught. (laughs) Police have offered to pay for the television as it was partially their fault that it was now missing. So he robbed the place, came back while the police were scouting the place out, snuck into the living room and tried to snag the TV, got the guy's wallet... When they caught him in the backyard, he left the TV and took off, and then he came back again and actually got the TV. This is one ballsy robber, I'm telling That's you. That's what I was, he's either really stupid or he's got balls the size that of is, kickballs. Ah, uh, that is nuts. His brain is not that smart. But then again, maybe it is because he got away wow. with it so far. And our final story, police in Little Rock, Arkansas have arrested a 23-year-old man after he dropped his own wallet while he was robbing a man at gunpoint. The would-be robber apparently got nervous and took off running, uh, didn't take anything. Later, phoned the victim and told uh, him to return his lost wallet to a nearby service station. Of course, the victim called the police, who found the suspect at a service station and arrested him on a brief foot chase that, that occurred before they got him. Hmm. So he, he dropped his own wallet. How did he get the guy's number to call him? Who knows? Because it says he called the, the gun. I don't know. He called the victim. I don't, under, I don't understand exactly how you do that. Anyway, moving on, I think that's going to do it for our bonus break. Brought to you by the Dollar Shave Club. You could learn more. You should do it right now. You're near a computer. I mean, you're listening to a podcast. You have to be. Check it out. DollarShaveClub.com slash radio. I double dog dare you. 